and welcome to High Growth with HTDC on the ThinkTech Live streaming series. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. For those of you who don't know, HTDC is the High Technology Development Corporation. We're a state agency that supports technology, innovation, entrepreneurship, and manufacturing. So our mission for this program is to showcase all of those things that happen in Hawaii during this program. First off, I'd like to make some announcements before we meet our wonderful guest. So, are you thinking about starting a business? February 19th, the SBDC has a How to Start a, a Business workshop at the Manoa Innovation Center. They'll address the important issues you need to consider to make sure that you want to start a small business. March 5th is Entrepreneurs' Day at the State Capitol. Please stop by the Capitol to show your support for Hawaii's entrepreneurs and to meet your legislators. If you'd like a table at the event, please email us at events at htdc.org. And I want to call out all the SBIR Phase 1 winners. HTDC offers the state's matching fund for up to 50% of your Phase 1 award. So if that's you, please contact us at sbir at htdc.org. Did you also know that HTDC offers event sponsorships? If you're planning an event that brings together tech industry, manufacturing, entrepreneurs, or investors, we're interested in sponsoring you. For more information, please visit our site at htdc.org. And I've saved the best announcement for last. HTDC is proud to announce our new executive director and CEO, and she is our guest today on our program. So our guest today is Robbie Melton. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. So Robbie Melton joins us with a wealth of experience in tech transfer, innovation, entrepreneurship, and commercialization. She was previously the Director of Entrepreneurial Innovation for the Maryland Technology Development Corporation, TEDCO, which sounds kind of like the Maryland equivalent of HTDC, almost. Welcome to the program. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so how did you start off your career, and how did it bring you to Hawaii? Well, originally, um, I was very interested in learning how government and corporations shape the growth of science and technology. So I got a master's degree at George Washington University in science, technology, and public policy. And my first job was here at UH. I worked on an international agriculture technology transfer program that was funded by USAID, and it was awesome because I got to meet um, leading scientists from all over the world that were working together to build a crop modeling for mm -hmm. countries that were underdeveloped that needed to figure out which crops to grow. Wow, and it was done in, here in Hawaii? Yeah, it was done at UH. Huh. It was very cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And then from there, so that was... So that was from there, yeah, so I was here in Hawaii in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. I, could, I guess back then, it was by, by that time, it was the mid-80s. And um, the tech industry here was just getting going. Hmm. And so we used to have the monthly pizza meetings. I don't know if people might remember the old tech pizza meetings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we used to do. And there were probably maybe 20 or 30 of us that would get together every month. But um, back then, it was just such a small community, and there wasn't mm -hmm. much room for growth. So I went to the mainland thinking I would be there just two years mm -hmm. and then come back. And um, I ended up being there 20 years, but it was great because that's <laughs> where my career kind of blossomed from there. Wow, that's great. And why, why did you get into the field of tech transfer? Um, well, actually, I wasn't really interested in the field of tech transfer. I was really interested in public policy towards mm -hmm. the growth of technology and science mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there's so much research dollars spent on um, different types of projects mm -hmm. that where the money goes affects what gets created in our country. So that's where I was really interested, not really tech transfer, so to speak, and really my strength was research administration hmm. and, and overseeing projects and getting projects going. And so mm -hmm. my path, like at UH, I was the sort of project manager, mm -hmm. not really the, the lead project manager, but I was the budget person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my job as overseeing the activities from an administrative point of view. And then um, I was at Children's Hospital 
and I was working in the cancer research lab as the operations manager wow. there. And then my, you know, it's just kind of serendipity. I ended up working at University of Maryland in industry university partnerships, hmm. where faculty would partner f with startup companies all the way up to large companies to help them commercialize one of their technologies. <gasps> Yeah, it was fascinating. That's so we got to see all different kinds of tech. Great. And because of my work at the hospital, mm -hmm. I became the biotech expert, even though I don't have a background <laughs> in biotech. So I was the biotech expert. And then I went to work for the state running, I was the assistant director for their venture capital um, program mm -hmm. at the state of Maryland. And then I ended up at TEDCO. Wow. We did lots of different programs at TEDCO. And explain what is TEDCO? So TEDCO is a seed fund. That's the easiest way to explain it. It's um, similar to HTDC in that it was founded by the state of Maryland, but it's an autonomous organization, so it's not a state agency. Mm -hmm. So it's able to take on federal funding. So we had our own seed fund. Um, it was $100,000 per company to get any kind of tech company started. We invested in over 300 companies. We also were able to take in federal funding. So we had a federal programs that actually gave money to tech companies to help develop products for the federal um, government, mostly in DOD, um, Army, and like Department of Homeland Security to meet their needs for technology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we had that and we had a Johnson & Johnson fund and then when I left, um, we had created four angel funds that were working on raising. Wow, and that was with local investors? Yeah, local investors. Wow, and then yeah. how did, where did the rest of the seed fund come from? Was that so from it came from the industry? state. No, it came from oh. the state. So oh, see, the I state see. gave us money, and the more we could show that we made good investments mm -hmm. and you could show the growth of our companies, mm -hmm. the more they were willing to, to, to continue to, to fund us. Wow. And then my, my core job was to do a lot of the educational programming because mm -hmm. I'd been working with startup companies for a long time. I did all the educational programs mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the companies. What kind of educational yes. programs? So we did portfolio workshops quarterly on investments. Everybody always wants to know how do you get wow. money, right? <laughs> so the things that really matter, nobody would show up for, like human resources, yeah. like yeah. staffing, some accounting. of the tax issues. We don't really do accounting yeah. because you can't really teach mm -hmm. accounting. But the, uh, we just did one on um, branding. Oh, How do you yeah. brand your company? Why is it important to start your branding at the very beginning mm -hmm. of your company, not when you've got the product made? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you miss the whole process mm -hmm. in that. To bring people along. So, yeah, and then we would do um, sort of mega um, events. We do an entrepreneur expo. That's a day-long event where you have five tracks going on all day of different types of programming for startup companies, growth companies investment, mm -hmm. we do a lot of pitches, mm -hmm. and a town hall with lots of exhibits. That was a lot of fun. And then we also did the ICE Awards. So we honored three companies, one for innovation, one for company, and one for entrepreneurship. Wow. And we did that to really highlight the success of our companies. Okay, so those were all within the companies that you invested in. Right. They came right. from there. Yeah. Wow, and that was every year you did uh -huh. that? Yeah, we started it about three years ago because we had one guy, he was fantastic. He actually had a large contract with NSA. Mm -hmm. He sold his company for $50 million. Wow. He was on and the fast track. Yeah, he was on Inc.'s Fast 500 for mm -hmm. like three years in a row. Wow. And I was like, people need to know this stuff, right? Definitely. That is, and he started off as a startup? Yeah. He was started up as a standalone one person guy. And, and grew. then you invested in his company. Yeah, we invested in just a small amount because he didn't use all the money. Wow. And then a private entity bought him out? or? Yeah, yeah, a larger company that was interested in his space bought him out. That's a great success story. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Another company we funded, uh, SemiConnect, actually has some of their electric charging stations here in Hawaii. Oh. Semi-Connect? Semi-Connect. 
Yeah, and so if you go to like all the Walgreens and some of the commercial real estate mm -hmm, mm -hmm. places here, they mm -hmm. have they have charging the stations. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's a, kind of cool to see that. That is great. Oh my, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess that was that kind of leads into our next question: is how, what kind of. Um, Previous experience from Maryland do you see that you could bring to Hawaii, to HTBC? Well, I think a lot of that because working with the startup community, what's exciting about Hawaii is there is so much happening here. You know, I just went to Startup Weekend, mm -hmm. hearing all the pitches mm -hmm. and seeing all the great ideas, you know, and you got the high growth fund and then you've got, you know, blue startups and a lot of different accelerators out mm -hmm. here. So mm -hmm. there's a lot going on here. So it's exciting to come back and be a part of that. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the experience that I have, you know, in investing in companies and working with startups, mm -hmm. I think blends really well with what's happening here. Oh, good. Was there a lot of investment capital in Maryland or? Well, you, yeah, it's a hub because it's right at Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So you're surrounded, you know, Maryland and Virginia surround Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. So, um, Tedco is actually the number one seed investor in the country for five years, wow. according to Entrepreneur Magazine. Very we did awesome. more investments than any other angel group. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were small mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, investments, but we did a lot. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we had a lot to show for it. That is amazing. I think that's, yeah. I, I feel like that's one of the challenges is bringing funding to Hawaii. So mm -hmm. I think that's gonna be a challenge. What was it like to be a seed investor? And it's fun. I mean, because it's great because you get to see everything before it hits the market. And mm -hmm. then when it does hit the market, it's a lot of pride. So hmm. um, I was portfolio manager to 35 companies. And so what that entailed was kind of being their cheerleader, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. contacting them, making sure everything went well. What resource could, could I help them? I helped a few of them get some investment. Uh, we did an angel forum just for our companies, and wow. we would invite about 40 investors would come every time. Um, two of my companies got wow. investment from that. Mm -hmm. So one of them is developing a um, device that firefighters and other first responders wear so that the commander can actually track the location inside the building without GPS huh. and without the triangular clock that most tracking systems use mm -hmm. and it actually can watch that person walk up and down the stairs so it can tell where they are it can tell if they're standing up or laying down wow. so all of that was developed after 9-11 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if they had had that they would have been able to tell who was exactly mm -hmm. in the tower who wasn't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's been great and now it's out in a, as a commercial product wow that is amazing mm -hmm. yeah you yeah. must be so proud yeah um, so as a seed investor, what do you look for in a startup or what kind of tips would you give? So um, it's just kind of like the same thing as a venture capitalist mm -hmm. because we look at what's the growth strategy? Have you really figured out your business model? Mm -hmm. How are you going to make money? Is it sustainable? Um, we look at the management team. We look at the market. How big is your market? I have one company that we actually invested in because in TEDCO, we're not there to make the home runs. Mm -hmm. We're there to make sustainable businesses. So one company, um, that was my portfolio company, he had a great technology. Mm -hmm. All the people who were in water quality management loved it, but it's not big enough for angel investment. Mm -hmm. So he got funding from us, and so mm -hmm. he had to bootstrap. Mm -hmm. But he's a solid company. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he had good technology, but you know he didn't have the right you know, mm -hmm. technology to take it forward. And I think that's some of the struggles with companies is everybody's like, oh, I want to get angel investment, or I'm going to get VC investment. But probably only 10% of those companies are really going to get venture mm -hmm. capital funding. Mm -hmm. More will probably get angel, but very few get venture capital funding. The rest have to bootstrap. Yeah. So we also look at financials, mm -hmm. too. Just like anybody else, we want to see we know it's kind of a crapshoot, but you know you need to have some sort of strategy in place. How's your funding? So if you show me a financial with your pro formas, and every year your travel expense is the same, 
your salary expense is the same, mm -hmm. you really haven't done your homework, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to invest in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the... Hmm. So did you necessarily look for companies with an exit strategy? Is that considered... Um, not for our seed fund. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do that now. We've progressed. You know, when we started out early on, we only gave up fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we were actually just, you know, looking for companies to be sustainable so and it's build more economic jobs. Development. Yeah, it's more economic. But now, because we're doing all the angel funding, we need to look at at those funds more as if they were going to eventually get angel investment. Mm -hmm. So again, so exit strategy is important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you're going to be a lifestyle business, we may or may not invest. Because sometimes you don't know if you're going to be a lifestyle business or mm, not. Until you start. Yeah, until getting... you start getting into it, too. Mm. Okay. So one of my companies that we invest in, she has a great lifestyle business. She has a biofilm remediation company, and she started out in the dental industry. Wow. And they had... Um, they were the top 100 dental products of the year when they came out. Uh -huh. But then everybody saw that and they're like, oh, we could use it for this or this or this. Uh -huh. So she ended up not only keeping that, but they went into the food processing industry. Wow. And so, and they've all done it. It's a family run business and they've done very well. That's amazing. Yeah. That's interesting when people start using your product for other things and mm -hmm. it's like a whole new market that you never exactly. expected. Exactly. So interesting. So we're going to take a short break. Okay. We'll be right back. So just to let you know, this is High Growth with HTDC, and my guest is Robbie Melton, the new Executive Director and CEO of HTDC. And I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and my guest today is Robbie Melton, HTDC's new executive director and CEO. And we are talking about TEDCO, which is a seed fund in Maryland that she was previously the director of. No, I was only director of entrepreneur director innovation. Of entrepreneur innovation. But that's perfect because yeah. that's what we need. <laughs> Um, we had talked about how you worked with startup companies and how you would give them seed funding or angel funding. And then how long after that phase do you keep up with the companies? So our agreements are generally for five years. So we track, uh, for those that get funding, they have to do quarterly reports. And then after the project's over, then it's annual. So we get annual economic impact. But for me, I took a personal interest in my companies. So I actually would call my companies up, see how they're doing, and if there's anything I can do to help them. A few of them, you know, we just never really made that connection. Mm -hmm. So just more of a hands-off kind mm -hmm. of but once a year. Them. Right, but it's, it's worth it. And then the others, you know, I got more engaged with and excited about. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that I really were able to help. And even after the agreement end, I still kept in touch with them. That's so great. it's all, for me, it's a long term process. Mm -hmm. I'm not there, you know, just to like. Of course, oh, there yeah. are some companies, though, that are challenges. <laughs> and, um, you know, if they're not willing to listen, if they're not coachable, so they're calling me up for advice, but they never want to do what mm -hmm. I advise, mm -hmm. then I'm less likely to spend my time with them mm -hmm. because it just drains your energy and you've got so many other companies to work with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have to know which ones are the ones to work with. And wow. 
And was Ted Coast did it have an incubator? Like it had a physical location and were the companies So our incubators in Maryland are all either run by city or county governments. Oh. And there's no state incubators. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a few private incubators, so there were about um, 23 incubators in the whole state. Mm -hmm. And then TEDCO, because of the type of organization we were, we were given money by the state to support the incubators. So I managed a business assistance fund. So each incubator would get a pot of money every year. Mm -hmm. And that incubator then would hire consultants to work directly with a company mm -hmm. to get the needed counsel mm -hmm. that the biz the incubator manager didn't have the skill set for. Hmm. Okay. So a lot of it's marketing, um, financial analysis, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. getting a company ready for investment, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so your companies were spread out within these incubators? No, so, the companies, so our companies didn't need to be related to an incubator. Okay. Yeah, so they're just any tech company. Originally, we actually had a tech transfer component where you had to be licensing technology from a university or federal mm -hmm. lab mm -hmm. to get our money, but then we were disregarding a whole other pool of companies. Mm -hmm. So then we opened it up to incubator companies, another entrepreneurial program, so any of those graduates could apply, mm -hmm. and then our rural companies could apply. Hmm. And so it kind of opened up the field to Yeah, to more, more. More, more people. Mm -hmm. And it was, was it necessarily all tech? Oh, it has to be all tech. All tech. Because you have to, if you're investing in a company, it has to have some kind of proprietary technology. Mm -hmm. So if they go under, you get the technology. Hmm. And then you can sell it to somebody else. And Tedco would do that? Yeah, but, you know, most of them, you know, actually what's amazing about Tedco, when you think of the, the amount of failure per company, mm -hmm. Tedco actually, up until about four years ago, 95% of our companies were still in business, wow. which is an amazing, and I think a lot of it has to do with our mentoring. And amazing. then when the economy really tanked, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, that's when we dropped down to like 80%. But still. But still, that's a, that's a pretty high that is. rate of that success. That is amazing. Wow. That is great. Hmm. Um, another thing that I wanted to ask you about was you had started Women in Bio. Uh-huh. What is Women in Bio? So Women in Bio uh, was created by uh, four women, mm -hmm. and um, two of us were the only ones attending um, biotech meetings, and <laughs> there were no other women. And I'm like, okay, we know that there are at least, you know, 10,000 women in Maryland in biotech. And how big was this meeting? So these meetings were, because they were early in the morning, they were like 7.30 in the morning, so that's <laughs> not the greatest time, but, you know, and there'd be maybe 30, 30 to 40 wow, people, and it's women. all men. Mm. And there might be one other woman showing up, but she wasn't really in biotech, they'd uh -huh. be like support services, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like human resources, so we're like, we should do something for women. And so the four of us all worked with startup companies. And time and time again, we would see women fail at getting investment. Hmm. So they didn't know how to talk to investors. They didn't know how to approach investors. They didn't really know how to get resources or network. Mm -hmm. So we decided to create an educational organization um, that would train women how to go after money mm -hmm. and also to help introduce them to money. So we started that, um, I don't know, back then they had the sniper shootings in the Washington, D.C. area. Mm. Our very first event was the last sniper shooting. Wow. And it was three miles from where we were having the dinner. Oh, my God. And we're like, oh, do we cancel it? And we're like, no, because we would lose $16,000. Huh. So we're like, okay, we're going to do it. Uh -huh. We sold out. Wow. At least there was such a need to do women in bio, and then we had other women who were saying, we're not entrepreneurs, we're mm -hmm. career women, and we need something too. Mm -hmm. So we quickly expanded our business model to include not only entrepreneurs, but also women in the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, we had about 16 different types of 
uh, programs that we did, and um, we now have chapters all over the world and all over the U.S. And in Hawaii? Soon, maybe, <laughs> maybe. What were, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced? And yeah, so part of it was being a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to raise money. Mm -hmm. So starting out, everybody loved us, but nobody wanted to give us money because they're like, <laughs> uh, how long is this going to last? But by our fifth year with solid programming and just growth of membership, people actually came to us and said, we want to be a part of it and sponsored us without us even asking. Hmm. So that was really the beauty of it because they saw the contribution we were making to the industry. Hmm. So it was it was really really great. So yeah, just the challenges of of funding mm -hmm. is really probably the hardest thing that we had to overcome. Hmm. And what about with Tenco? Was fine funding ever a problem an issue? Well, we were funded by the state, mm -hmm. and so we had to be creative to expand our mission to get funding from other sources, mm -hmm. just so that, you know, if something happened with the state budgets, as you know, always mm -hmm. does, we had another pool of money that we were, you know, still generating other programs with. And that also helped strengthen our relationship with the re legislature, because they could see mm -hmm. we were doing other things and bringing in additional funding. Mm -hmm. So it was important to do that. How did you build that relationship with industry and the startups? Well, um, a lot of it's word of mouth. So when people, you know, hear about us, we did a lot of PR um, to get the word out about mm -hmm. what we did. Mm -hmm. Any chance we get, we go speak at events and say, hey, we have money. And of course, <laughs> everybody wants money. So, you know, especially when the economy is bad, everybody mm -hmm. starts a company because they don't have a job. <laughs> So that's kind of how you, you know you got the word out uh, to different people because we don't mm -hmm. really work with industry. We work with entrepreneurs and the startup community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, but Johnson and Johnson came to us because they were looking at ways to fund early stage companies, and huh. so they knew what we did. They knew we invested about fifty percent of our funding was in biotech. So they came to us and said, okay, we've got a pot of money. You know, they're not necessarily looking to pull somebody into Johnson mm -hmm. & Johnson, but they were looking at, at supporting new innovations for the, the biotech field. Wow, to potentially eventually pull the technology Possibly, in, possibly. So we had some companies that eventually ended up working in strategic partnerships with J&J, &J, but not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Like again, Part of it is just to support the industry, but then again, when money got tight, mm -hmm. they didn't have any additional funding mm -hmm. to put into. Because mm -hmm. it's kind of a high risk. Yeah, it is all high risk. Investment. Yeah, it's all high risk. You know, there's no sure bet. <laughs> no sure bet with startups. <laughs> but they're Johnson and Johnson, yeah. which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. That's great that you could secure something like that, a partnership like that. Um, do you think we could do something like that? Like, um, I'm not sure if we have something like Johnson & Johnson here in Hawaii, but... Well, they wouldn't necessarily need to be here. Johnson & Johnson wasn't in Maryland. They were in New Jersey. Hmm. Yeah, oh. they're based in New Jersey. Okay. I mean, nowadays you don't need to be mm -hmm. in the location. Mm -hmm. But That's again, true. because HTDC is a state agency, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know it's harder that... To work with. that we have the ability to do mm -hmm. that. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I guess since I've been here, we've been trying to s develop the relationship with industry, like with bigger mm -hmm. partners like that. But just as far as building well, we should. support. We should, because we're, you know, we're the high tech development corporation. We're not startup high tech development mm -hmm. corporation. We're tech, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. tech. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a little bit broader mission. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I'm excited. And then I also read about an ag development program that you had built. Yeah. How did that work? How was so it's a funny story because um, we have a very close relationship with USDA and they have one of their research centers in Beltsville, Maryland. And of course they have a lot of land and a lot of it's not used. And um, 
they came, they were, got congressional approval for enhanced use lease agreement, which means private parties can actually rent part of the exactly. space in the, on, the, on their campus as long as it met their mission. And so since we had close ties with them, we actually wanted to um, work with the, the county to create an uh, agricultural incubator hmm. on their property. Mm -hmm. So we had written a white paper to Congress to do a million dollar you know, kind of pilot project to get that started. Well, we came back and they said, oh, we're not going to give you a million dollars. We're going to give you $98,000. <laughs> oh, wow. So, and then we still want you to do the incubator. I'm like, well, you can't do an incubator <laughs> with $98,000. So our executive director says, okay, anybody have any great ideas? And one of the things we do with our federal labs is we do these technology showcases to showcase what's available for licensing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the problem is we were doing it all wrong. Hmm. So first off, we were doing it in central Maryland, not where the farmers are, and we were just showcasing what's available. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any idea what the farmers needed. Mm -hmm. So what I created was, well, let's go to the different regions of the state and hear what the farmers have to say. Mm -hmm. Let's hear what their needs are, and then from that, let's go back to USDA and say, these are the needs, what do you have? Hmm. in terms of what are you developing that's going to meet their needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So once we did that, we would bring their scientists over to meet with the farmers mm -hmm. and talk about their technology and see what those needs are and see if there's um, any a linkages mm -hmm. and there's a match. So one of the great things is, is they had a, can you believe, a potato modeling system. And <laughs> they used to grow potatoes in Maryland. Mm -hmm. but um, for some reason that kind of went away. Well, through this showcase that we did, they actually adopted the potato modeling system to use in the eastern shore of Maryland. Wow. So there are a lot of other things that had popped out as a result of these showcases around the state so that um, USDA Agricultural Research Service liked it so much that they adopted that model to do these what we called ag forms across the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all of their tech transfer offices are now required to do these forums. That's great. That is great. Yeah, so it's pretty exciting to that see is. how that is. That that's is smart developed. too, to go actually go out to the customer. Right. And talk to the customer. We're gonna take a quick break. <laughs> um, my guest today is Robbie Melton, the new executive director and CEO of HTDC, and I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki on the High Growth with HTDC program, and we'll be right back. I'm Hong Jiang, host for Asia in Review on Tuesdays. And I'm David Day, host for Asian Review on Thursdays. Both of us broadcast our respective shows at 4 p.m. And my topics tend to deal with uh, questions related to environment, culture, history, and sometimes human rights. And my shows tend to be on international business, foreign policy, geopolitics, and national security. And you can watch our shows live on the ThinkTech website at thinktechhawaii.com. And uh, you can also watch us on YouTube or Alalo. So come join us on Thursdays at 4 p.m. I'm David Day. And Ar on Tuesdays at 4 p.m., I'm Hong Jiang. Aloha. Aloha. Hi, and welcome back to High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. And my guest today is Robbie Melton, our new executive director and CEO. Um, so you had mentioned that you have ties to Hawaii. How did you come to Hawaii? So my father grew up in Hilo. Hmm. So um, I have lots of relatives here. Mm -hmm. and my grandmother was a long-term principal at one of the elementary schools in Hilo. And, um, and through her career, you know, she became one of the leading educators in Hawaii. Wow. And um, so I have a lot of cousins here. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I got graduated from my undergraduate degree uh, in economics, I moved here because mm -hmm. I wanted to meet my relatives because when my family, we had, there were four of us kids, so it's too expensive to fly everybody to Hawaii, <laughs> you know, like 
some people get a, a chance to do. So I came here once when I was four years old. Wow. And so I decided to come out here mm -hmm. and then meet all my relatives. So I have relatives here in Oahu, Maui, Big Island, wow. and Kauai. <laughs> so yeah, it's Chinese, you know, <laughs> big family. So it was great coming out here and, you know, getting, you know, I feel like these are my roots because I just immediately felt a connection here. Mm -hmm. And so it was great to be here. And then I left to go to graduate school. I was here for a while, left to go, to, and then with the full intent of coming back, which I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I, I ended up here. So I still have a lot of cousins here. <laughs> So, but you weren't born in Hawaii. Your father had moved. Yeah, so I always say I was forced to grow up in Iowa because <laughs> if you know Iowa, you would never want to live there. Iowa. So it's a great place to raise a family because it's very safe. <laughs> but um, the winters, when I moved here the first time from Iowa, it was like 65 below zero with the wind chill. <gasps> it, was I can't brutally, even imagine. it was brutally cold. Like yeah, it was, it was horrible. And I remember giving my mother my coat. I'm going, I'm never going to need this again. <laughs> and then in the winter times, it's like 106 degrees for like two weeks. Ah, so it's like, that's it's Iowa? Really that's Iowa. Wow. So you grew up there. So I grew up in Iowa, mm -hmm. yeah. And I knew, you know, back in eighth grade, I was going to leave. I didn't know where I was going <laughs> to go. But I just, you know, it was just not a, a great place for... I'm kind of an adventurous spirit, so mm -hmm. I love to travel, mm -hmm. like to see and do new things, so Iowa just really wasn't the place for me to be. Is it a small town in Iowa? Well, no, I grew up in Des Moines, which is the oh. capital, mm -hmm. so it's a nice, mm -hmm. it's really blossomed into a beautiful city, but when I was growing up, it was very small townish. We used to, you know, travel a lot as a family, mm -hmm. so I would see other cities and things like that, mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but, you know, I went to Drake University, which I absolutely loved. And quite a few people from Hawaii actually go to school there yeah. at Drake. Wow. And so I don't know if they're family ties, but it's a great private school. Drake. And um, really, really a great school. Is your family still there? I only have a brother there. So everybody, oh, okay. my mother's in Michigan. I have <laughs> a brother and sister in San Francisco. Oh, everybody kind of. So everybody kind of spread out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, my my brother's the only one that braves the cold. <laughs> I'll have to try going through Iowa, maybe. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, what are you looking forward to most as being our new director? Oh wow, there's so many things. What <laughs> so the reason why, you know, I was really excited, HGDC was created when I was living here and in the tech world. And so hmm. everybody was really excited about the organization. This was something new, and they were going to really develop, you know, the tech industry. So I just, you know, when I saw the opportunity, I said, you know, I'd love to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, I've wanted to come back for quite a while, but because of what I do mm -hmm. is very specialized. You can't just, like, show up and get mm -hmm. a job. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's lots of great things going on here in terms of tech, the investment community, the accelerators, our incubators, Startup Hawaii, mm -hmm. I went to Startup Weekend. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of fun things going on and it would just be great to be a part of that and really to build a more cohesive, you know, tech, you know, and when I think of tech, I don't just think of high tech, I think of all tech. So, you know, not only you know, the apps, the software, the hardware, the sensors, the engineering mm -hmm. tech but and biotech, but there's softer tech like ag tech, mm -hmm. aquaculture, you know, we're talking about fashion industry. I mean, tech resides in everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the whole thing is just really showing how tech can really build a good, strong Hawaii economy. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm here to do. That's great. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. I think that's what we need. I think um, you're right. I think we want to build tech as a platform in multiple industries. Because I think when you were first here, like when tech was just kind of growing, it was just the software, just the ISPs, just mm -hmm. the internet. 
And so it must be a, a huge change for you to come back and see the tech oh, yeah. industry now. Yeah, it's really blossomed very well. A lot of energy. I went to Startup Weekend, and it was great just to see all the people in the room. We were at um, Box Jelly, mm -hmm. which is a great co-working space. So we're all jam-packed in there, and it just, you know, hearing people talking, there's just a lot of good buzz. And you need good buzz to really propagate, you know, mm -hmm. the industry. Mm -hmm. And just hearing people's ideas, you know, all kinds of different ideas. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, coming back on Sunday and, and hearing what they put together. And one guy I was talking to, they had started down one path and realized it wasn't going to go anywhere. So halfway through, they just scrapped it. Within the weekend. Within the weekend, came up with a new idea and came up with a great idea. Huh. They found something that was a niche that nobody else had thought of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they checked it out and, you know, kind of in the seat of their pants, put this together. And that's kind of how, you know, industry <laughs> grows. But it was kind of neat. And then to hear the pitches. And it was great that they brought judges in, people who had Hawaii ties but no longer live here, mm -hmm. so that they can come back and see mm -hmm. oh, what's going on now, mm -hmm. you know. So there is something happening. You know, the state's more supportive of mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe they'll come back, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what we want. Yes, definitely. We want, we want the Kamainas to come back, mm -hmm. you know, and help mm -hmm. do this. Yeah, and I think a lot of people do want to come back to Hawaii just because it is a special place. And I've met a lot of Kamaina that, that do want to have an opportunity to come home. So mm -hmm. it's good that if we can provide the opportunity Right, yeah. I think one of the concerns I've heard is people are worried that we don't have the labor to support, you know, the tech industry. Hmm. But, you know, we've got great community colleges. Mm -hmm. You know, all the training, you know, back east mm -hmm. happens through the community colleges, so you get the labor market ready. Mm -hmm. And we can do that here. Hmm. So that we don't need to, like, people are worried about importing people. We hmm. don't need to import. We can just train the people here. Mm -hmm and get them ready. Great. I'm really, really looking forward to working with you, and I'm excited on where you're going to take HTDC. Thank you so much for being my guest. I really appreciate it, your it time. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure <laughs> to be here. And thank you so much to our audience um, for watching High Growth with HTDC. Thank you for supporting the entrepreneur community in Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.